Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Mobile Application Tester. We are in chapter 3 talking about the test types and the test process for mobile applications. And as a part of this chapter, we are still continuing with the 3.1, which is common test types which are applicable for mobile applications. And this is the part three of this tutorial. We'll be talking about another remaining few test types which are applicable for this. As a part of today's tutorial, we'll be talking first with the usability testing. First of all, let me tell you, usability is all about making sure an application is user-friendly to uh, the end users or not, and that can certainly be defined based on the uh, end users uh, mindset, psychology, and the professionalism, and a lot many other factors keeping into account. So we generally have a survey which is conducted in order to understand your end user, and then you try to prepare the usability requirements and then validate it. Now usability requirement is just not simple in order to make sure that if an application has the right tab order or has a good keyword, there are a lot many other things which includes a deeper dive into usability. Now usability can definitely be explored separately as a part of test analyst certification, which is in detail discussed there, as it is a responsibility of the test analyst to organize and get it conducted uh, within the test lifecycle. Also, we do have a specialized certification for usability tester, and if you're one among them looking forward to get certified with usability testing, you can certainly look forward to that certifications post this as well. Now, usability is the most important or very important for mobile applications as well, because if your users are not happy with your app, they certainly have other options to look into. So data shows that a large number of users deinstall their apps within a few minutes of installing because of poor usability or performance. Now due to this, it is recommended that the user experience, in short, is also called as UX design, considers the look and feel of the platform which the app is to be used on. If the UX does not confirm with the user expectations for their platform of choice, it can have a strong negative impact. Thus, a tester should be aware of look and feel on the platform used. Now, again, this UX is just not limited to user experience. If you further deep dive into this, you have a user interface, you have an user experience, and user experience basically talks about that does your user come back to you this app or how long do you really engage a user to use with your app, right? Because, for example, if I'm creating an app, which is gaming app, now, a user does not return back to the screen or I don't hold him in terms of attraction and giving that excitement to him while using the app, he will certainly look forward to uninstall it. And he's not thrilled about with the expectations what he had. He will certainly uninstall the app and say, goodbye, I don't, I'm, I don't think I really like you. Probably I have better options to interact with and get engaged. It should be attracting people to come back to the app now and then in order to continue playing. And there are good options like we have uh, PUBG and a lot of things which you can see as an example today, which basically involves everything. In fact, you know, the Pokemon Go was another thing. Blue Whale, though it was a stupid game, which I felt, but people were so energetic to play that game. Anyways, usability test can be conducted by a tester using various available heuristics and test tours. Considering personas is also a helpful support for usability testing. If required, a usability lab can also be used for this purpose. Now again, I don't want you to get into deeper dive as far as the syllabus is not concerned. But yeah, for your point of view, heuristics are basically the design review, where we generally review the design part of the uh, user uh, friendliness, uh, experience, and interface. And we definitely have test tours where we can generally ask some real users to interact with it or uh, feeling like a real user while testing these requirements. And even coming to the usability lab, you can have a portable lab where you can ask some real users to come and interact with such products and share their feedback. Now in projects, finding uh, findings identified during the usability test are mostly just findings and not a defect because it depends on individual perception. For one person, it could be right. Other person would say, I, I don't like it this way, right? So this is where we say that oh, these findings are not declared as a defect, rather just the findings. Again, it's up to the organization based on the poll, number of votes on that to decide whether to go for it or not. 
The tester must have the ability to explain the findings to the team so it can be decided and taken into consideration for implementation. Product owner or similar stakeholders will also be a part of it. To achieve satisfactory usability, an app should cater all these points, be self-explanatory and intuitive to any uh, end user, uh, allow our users mistake. That means if it happens, then it should be an error message to tell them that what exactly is wrong so that they can correct it. Be consistent in wording and behavior. Abide by the design guidelines of the platform and make needed information visible and reachable to each screen size and type. Because a lot of time we see that there are information message visible, but that is somewhere in different corner where the user generally don't uh, uh, is not expected to navigate to. So you may definitely lose out though you have the features available. You just want to make sure that it is visible to the end user so that he can correct the errors what he or she makes. Coming on to the next is the database testing. Of course, database testing is equally important for mobile applications as well. As far as the data is involved, the database testing need to be conducted. So many apps need to store data locally while various data storage mechanisms such as flat files or databases. Some of the test conditions to be considered for database testing of mobile apps include validation of data storage issues, Number one, so of course, what are the general issues which you generally face with uh, data storage, right? So in that again further, if you want to, you can definitely do a deeper dive saying that synchronization, upload conflicts, data security, constraints on the data, CRUD operations like create, read, update, delete, and then search. Search is again a very common thing which interacts directly with the database and returns you the output based on the criteria made. Now the other point is data integration testing for data provided by the device, uh, for example, contacts, or by third party apps like pictures, videos, and messages, so should be able to interact with all other apps and apps should be able to access all this information. Another thing to talk about is performance of storing data on the device, like how long does it really take to store certain values or certain information on the device and how long does it take to return the query with the result when a user search for a particular item in the search box. So that's where the database testing is also equally involved when it comes to mobile application testing to meet the desired expectations. Coming to the next one is globalization and localization testing. Of course, these two are completely new thing for you, but globalization and localization generally stands for making sure if an application is meant for a particular group of people, that's localization. And if that app can be used by anyone across the world, it's called as globalization, which is also called as internationalization, which is in short known as I-18N. What's I-18N? There are 18 characters between I and N. And similarly, localization is also called as L-10N because 10 characters between L and N. So internationalization or globalization testing of the application includes testing an app for different locations, formats for the dates, because generally the date format changes when you move from one country to another, numbers, currency, uh, and replacing actual string with the pseudo strings. Now localization testing includes testing of an app with localized strings, images, and workflows for a particular region. For example, Russian and German words could be much longer than those in the other languages. So we wanna just make sure that Will that fit into the purpose and will it be displayed in the same box or maybe the same UI or not? So if you are trying to target such specific things, then make sure that it meets the criteria. Also, a very uh, since mobile devices have different screen sizes and resolutions, limited screen sizes may lead to problems with the translated string. These issues should be checked as standard globalization or localization test. Also to add, a very important aspect to be checked in the date format is, of course, the format of it. If you navigate between different continents, you find the format changes from MMDDYY or DDMMYY, or even if you talk about some of the country like South Africa, you have YYYY, MMDD, the right other way around of the other countries. So that included as a part of the globalization and localization also. Coming to the last one here, we are talking about the accessibility testing as far as it is applicable, okay? It's not really mandatory to conduct accessibility testing for all the apps, but if it is applicable, you would conduct it. 
Now, what is accessibility testing? If your application or the software is accessible to differently abled users, if they have any kind of, you know, differently abledness, then you will make sure that if it is going to be accessible to your user as well. So accessibility testing is performed to determine the ease by which users with disability, sorry, that should be a wrong word to be called. We should actually call it as uh, differently abled and can use a component or system to be tested here. For mobile apps, this can be done using device accessibility settings and testing the app for each setting. So by default, a lot of people make use of it, though you don't fall under this category, but accessibility options are useful for many other normal users as well. Now, accessibility guidelines are available from platform vendors, and these should be used. For example, both Google and Apple have published accessibility guidelines for their respective platforms. Taking feedback from people who require accessibility is also useful to add more value to it. Now for mobile web, an accessibility guide has been published by W3C, which is World Wide Web Corporation, which should be also considered if in case you are making it as a hybrid app or making it as a browser-based app. So putting it all together, all these are, including the part one, part two, and part three, are the different common types which can be definitely conducted for a mobile app and should be tested in order to make sure that they meet the expectations and fulfill the needs of the user. So. That's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.